There are some human beings who are dimly aware of their own deaths, yet have chosen to stay on in what used to be their homes, to be close to surroundings they once held dear. 3.4 miles from downtown San Diego stands a house built in 1857, claimed to be the most haunted house in America. The ground upon which the house stands were used for public hangings prior to Mr. Whaley's purchase of the property. The most famous hanging on the property was that of Yankee Jim Robinson on September 18, 1852. At 12.11 p.m. on October 6, 2013, I captured an image that is believed to be that of Yankee Jim. Well, I'm standing at the window where, on October 6, 2013, I photographed an image. And it was in the upper portion of this window here that is believed to be the image of Yankee Jim Robinson. Thomas and Anna Whaley had six children. Four members of the Whaley family died in the house, including Thomas's widow, Anna, and the couple's fifth child, Violet, who committed suicide following her divorce from George T. Bertolacci. This is the story of the Whaley House hauntings. This cemetery here is directly related to incidents that are happening at the Whaley House. Now this is the El Campo Santo Cemetery which was established in 1849. I'm standing here at the gravesite of Yankee Jim Robinson who is reported to haunt the Whaley House and that is where I'm headed next. The Whaley House is located in historic Old Town, San Diego, California. The house stands today as a classic example of mid-19th century Greek Revival architecture, dedicated as a historic house museum on May 25, 1960, and open to the public ever since. It's one of Southern California's most popular visitor destinations. Over 100,000 people visit the Whaley House annually from around the world to experience this historic, renowned museum. It is owned by the County of San Diego, and since September of 2000, Save Our Heritage organization has managed and operated the property. There is a common myth regarding these very large pepper trees uh, planted in the yard here. Uh, some say that Yankee Jim was hung by the branches of one of these trees. Uh, that's not the case. These trees were planted after the property was purchased by Thomas Whaley. Uh, also, there's also a legend that uh, a little girl ran between a clothesline and was strangled. That is also a myth, a legend, and is not fact. What is fact is this property was a actual public gallows and it's rumored that Thomas Whaley had witnessed Yankee Jim's death. Yankee Jim didn't die peacefully. He was actually strangled and not hung. He kept his feet onto the wagon for as long as he could until he was pushed off. So he had a very tragic death. In this house, it is said that four members of the Whaley family have died tragically, two very tragically. And in this video, I'm going to cover some of the history of the Whaley House hauntings. Stay tuned. The Whaley family originally came to Plymouth, Massachusetts from Northern Ireland in 1722. 
Alexander Whaley, the great-grandfather of Thomas Whaley, a gunsmith, participated in the Boston Tea Party and was with George Washington during the Battle of White Plains. He provided flintlock muskets for the Revolutionary War and his house in Long Island was General Washington's headquarters. Thomas Whaley was born into a family of blacksmiths, gunsmiths, and locksmiths. Before Thomas Whaley owned the location where the Whaley House was to be built in San Diego, it was used as a public gallows and approximately five to ten executions were held on the site. The most notable being that of Yankee Jim Robinson, who was hung off the back of a wagon in 1852. Yankee Jim came to San Diego in 1851, presumably because he was fleeing problems up north in a mining camp. He was later convicted of attempted grand larceny for stealing a pilot boat in San Diego Harbor and sentenced to hang. The rope was apparently a bit too long and it failed to snap Robinson's neck, causing him to hang and strangle to death for over 15 minutes. Some accounts actually say it must have been up to 45 minutes. Coincidentally, Thomas Whaley was a witness of the hanging. The local newspaper reported that Yankee Jim kept his feet in the wagon as long as possible, but was finally pulled off, causing him to swing back and forth like a pendulum until he strangled to death. Additionally, the executioner was apparently his godfather, Sheriff William Crosswaith. The archway between the Whaley House music room and the parlor is supposed to be the estimated location of the gallows before the house was constructed. Some people have reported feeling a constriction in their throat when standing there in the parlor. Juan Verdugo, a cohort in the Antonio Guerra Native American Uprising of 1851, may also have been executed in the same gallows on December 13, 1851, by hanging. Guerra, who orchestrated the uprising, was executed by firing squad in January of 1852 down the road at El Campo Santo Cemetery. Antonio Guerra, chief of the San Luis Indians, upset because the sheriff wanted to collect taxes on local Indian cattle, led his and several of other tribes against Americans in Southern California. The area was under martial law and the county had only a small detachment of soldiers at the old mission under Lieutenant Colonel Madruger. Warner's Ranch was attacked by Indians which alarmed the town. Every able-bodied male enrolled in the volunteer unit commanded by Major Edward Fitzgerald and sentries were posted at all town entrances. When the men went out to fight, only 35 men, including Whaley, were left in San Diego to defend the town. When on guard duty, Whaley wore a brace of six shooters and kept a horse ready to saddle. Five Americans were killed at Warner Ranch and Agua Caliente. The Indian trouble ended with the capture of Antonio Guerra. Thomas Whaley was one of 12 men on the firing squad in El Campo Santo at the gravesite, which ended the life of Antonio Guerra, found guilty of the uprising at Warner's Ranch. He was made to stand before his freshly dug grave and executed by firing squad. On the day of the execution, January 17, 1852, while standing before his open grave, Gara was requested of Padre Juan Holbein to ask for pardon from the large crowd that had gathered to witness the execution. Eventually, Gara stated, Gentlemen, I ask your pardon for all my offenses and expect yours in return. Afterwards, the firing squad shot him and his body fell backwards into his own grave. On January 5, 1882, Violet Eloise Whaley and Anna Amelia Whaley were both married in San Diego. Violet married George T. Bertolacci and Anna Amelia wed her first cousin, John T. Whaley, son of Henry Hurst Whaley. Two weeks into Violet's marriage, as the couple was traveling back east on their honeymoon, she awoke one morning to find her husband gone. 
Bertolacci, as it turned out, was a con artist, and as Violet and her family later learned, had only married her for the substantial dowry he believed he would collect upon the marriage. Violet was essentially shunned by polite society upon returning home, not only without her husband, but also unchaperoned, something proper ladies simply did not do in the 19th century Victorian society. Violet and George's divorce was finalized approximately a year later, but Violet never recovered from the public humiliation and betrayal, and suffered from depression. Violet ended up committing suicide with Thomas Whaley's 32 caliber on August 18, 1885. She was then only 22 years of age. Her suicide note reads as follows. Mad from life's history, swift to death's mystery, glad to be hurled anywhere, anywhere, out of this world. Now, I'm not a paranormal investigator, but I do have a digital recorder, so we're going to try something. It is quite windy today, so I'm recording from the video and also audio from the digital recorder. Once that car passes, we'll try something, see if we pick up anything. Yankee Jim, you were accused of a crime and hung on the Whaley House property. Are you innocent of that crime? Do you have anything to say? It would be reasonable to assume that you would not haunt your own gravesite, but you would haunt the place where you tragically died. So I'm going to give another test for the audio recording. Yankee Jim Robinson, you were accused of a crime and committed to death by hanging. It was a tragic hanging and you didn't die by hanging, you died by strangulation. Do you have anything to say about your innocence? There's something on it. Okay, this is really interesting. It's a note. I powered down my digital recorder, which had two bars on the battery. It now has full battery power. That's interesting. How does a battery get recharged? when it's discharging. Well, I'm standing at the window where on October 6th of 2013, I photographed an image and it was in the upper portion of this window here that is believed to be the image of Yankee Jim Robinson. Now, Yankee Jim was reported to be a very tall man. I'm 5'8" and I'm standing about the level of the ground level inside this building, so that would be about six foot. He was reported to be six foot or more. So, we're gonna do some more comparisons on this video and on the photograph that I had taken back in 2013. Stay tuned. Okay, this is the footage taken recently at the Whaley House. Let me enlarge this image here. And this is where the image appeared in a 2013 photograph that I had taken. And let's do a comparison. Here you'll notice the, 
the shutters, the green shutters are not on the windows. They're doing some restoration. And up in this upper right hand corner, let me bring that down a bit. You can clearly see the image of a face. Uh, here's the eyebrows, very prominent squared off eyebrows. You see a nose bridge, you see a mouth. Uh, the rest of the forehead and appears to be hair around the edges. Uh, let me, the more you zoom in you get a, a more distorted image so that's about as far as you want to go with uh, bumping this image up. The properties on here, it's a high resolution image of, let's see, how many megabytes was this originally? 139 megabytes, so it's a pretty large file. It's pretty well detailed. But even zoomed out, you can see that there is something there, and that's not a reflection of me taking the photograph. Also, nobody can be in this room of this building because it's walled off. You can look into it from the outside in and from the inside into this room, and I'll have other pictures of that. But uh, here, you can clearly see a man's face in the upper right hand corner of that image. Could this be the face of Yankee Jim Robinson peering out from the inside window unaware of his own death and unable to move on? This footage shows the closed off kitchen space where the public can view but not enter. In October of 2013, could I have captured a photographed ghostly apparition as so many have at the most infamous haunted house in America? the Whaley House. You decide.